one by the name of Katie Waldman uh, wrote this really interesting piece in Slate about narcissism and whether or not it could be considered a mental illness. Now I should note that the latest version of the DSM, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, which is used to diagnose people, does include narcissism as a uh, personality disorder. And people are wondering whether or not that makes sense. So there are a lot of interesting ways of determining whether or not you could be considered a narcissist. So let me give you um, some information that uh, Waldman did share in her piece. She says a study in 2008 uh, by researcher uh, Jean Twang found that college students score higher on the narcissistic personality inventory now than they did in 1979 and that more of them consider themselves above average. Not as narcissists but just like above average people yeah. like right? Yeah like and, and part of the reason why is because there was a shift in parenting, right? Where all of a sudden you have the parents that want to give their kids trophies if they won second place. Because they want to encourage second their kids. Second place for showing up. Yeah, for showing right. up. Like they want to they want to encourage over. their kids, they want to build their self esteem. And that's had that's had an impact on my generation, I I would say. And I don't necessarily think it's bad. I all do. right. All right, we'll talk about that. A study from the National Institutes of Health determined that 9.4% of 20 to 29 year olds exhibit extreme narcissism compared with 3.2% of those older than 65. Now what the hell is narcissism? Narcissistic personality disorder is estimated to afflict 1% of the population. Mm. Patients with narcissistic personality disorder display pathological traits such as grandiosity, self-centeredness, and a constant need for attention and admiration. Excessively attuned to the reactions of others, goal setting is based on gaining approval from others and firmly holding to the belief that one is better than others. People who are willing to admit they are more narcissistic than others probably actually are more narcissistic. <laughs> um, all right, that's all interesting. I, th I think that narcissism is interesting because I, based on what I've read about it, I think that it applies to a lot of people in my age group. And I don't know if it's you know due to the parenting factor that I mentioned earlier. I don't know if it's because it's more evident due to social media and the selfies, right? We took a selfie earlier today. I'm very handsome today. <laughs> but I, I think that earlier generations would display extreme narcissism if social media and the internet was available to them the same way that it's available to my generation. Am I right or am I wrong? Yeah, I don't think that there's anything particular about this generation that makes them take selfies that other people wouldn't have if they'd had that capability mm -hmm. to have that immediate gratification. But that probably doesn't make you a narcissist to just take selfies mm -hmm. or to think that you're, you know, again, there's a sense of, I don't think taking selfies increases your sense of grandiosity or that you're more important than others. Mm -hmm. um, I think that there are more things now, you know, there are more uh, velvet ropes in life now mm -hmm. than there used to be. Um, there are more, everybody wants to get behind the velvet rope, everybody wants to get into the VIP it's room. It's the pacification everybody wants, of society, right, it's all those damn get, feminists. Right, we want, but we all want to mm. get uh, upgraded to first class and we want to take the, uh, the uh, you know, the Uber X instead of Uber Black and we want, you know, uh, how can you not, you know, um, you're, you know, I fly all the time so, you know, I've had moments where I'm like, you know, how are you not, I don't say things like this, but I think, how are you not giving to this? I'm a, I'm a platinum member, I'm a platinum elite member, you know. Mm -hmm. We'll get upgraded, we'll get treated better, we will get a nice seat on the bus, a, a car will come pick us up, I don't have to take a cab. I've said that, I'm like, I don't want to take a cab. You know, and then you realize, cabs all my life, but I don't want to take a cab. Yeah. But I don't want to wait in the cab line. Right. Right. You know, but is that narcissism or is that more a sense of entitlement? Like, well, I mean, well, I, I think, I think sort of, they, to some extent, they go together. I mean, at what point do you recognize I have to wait in the cab line, like everybody else? Every, nobody wanted to wait in the cab line. Everybody, you know, I hate the idea. Uh, and so I, by the way, arrange some way that I don't have to wait in the cab line. I might have to pay a little bit for it, but usually I figure out some way around it. But, you know, after you fly five and a half hours from the East Coast, and then add on to that getting to the air, you know, you've had a seven and a half hour travel, the last thing you want to do is get home and then wait 28 minutes for a taxi cab, mm -hmm. right? That's normal, I think, not wanting to do that. Thinking that you don't have to because you're special, that's a, then, then that's a problem. 
Mm -hmm. um, so, but you know what? Those things happen. Someone could be born and raised broke as hell, and they didn't have those opportunities. And maybe when they're an adult, they get those opportunities. And when they get used to it, it doesn't mean that they're de something was in their brain and, their, and they had some mental issue from the time from 12 to 30. Right. They got used to a certain level of quality of life. Yeah, I'd say, quality, and like, no matter where you came up. from, everyone enjoys an easier life, you know? Yeah, no, I, yeah. I, I agree with you. The question is that, that now that there are so many different levels of, that there's so many things that we have attached status to. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, like your rental car company. I'm an Avis Gold. Like, who gives a shit? Yeah, it's a rental car company. It's not, super it's not really great status, yeah. right? That's not getting you into clubs. Um, so, uh, I mean, I, I hear you. It's, my my uh, uh, best friend used to call it the, uh, the steak factor. Like, the first time you go to, uh, like, out here in L.A., the fancy markets or, like, Bristol Farms or even Whole Foods or even a, whatever, or even the, now they have at Ralph's and Vaughn's, the elite sections there. We used to pay, you'd go get a steak, and a steak would cost $3. Mm -hmm. And you get a steak, and you'd eat it, and it would be delicious. Mm -hmm. But now you go to Bristol Farms, and that steak costs $17. But let me tell you something better <laughs> right is it really better yeah yeah <laughs> um and then you eat that and you're like i can't eat that as a steak i can't what am i an animal <laughs> you know i'm a human being i might eat that four dollar steak what do you take me for well then uh, why don't you just go to a restaurant and eat a steak there well, well i'm I not like jr like... i'll go to a restaurant and eat the steak there i'm saying sometimes you might want to go home and grill a nice steak up and that right. would be your meal or something mm -hmm. and it's just you know you you get ex but I, this is just to jr's point this doesn't i don't think this makes you a narcissist you just think you start eat the the moment you start exposing yourself to finer things in life, it becomes harder to give up those other things that aren't fine in life. When you forget, you might have been pretty freaking happy yeah. when you would go and get that $4 steak and life was good. Okay, so this is somewhat related to narcissism. By the way, so the TYT I, I, comments now are going to be like, oh, first world problems. I know. I know. Just in advance, I, I want to fuck you guys. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Um, this is somewhat related to narcissism, but there's, you know, this backlash to being vain, right? Mm -hmm. Like being vain is a terrible thing. No one should be vain. What do you think about vanity? Do you think that it's necessarily a bad thing? I think that we're all freaking vain to some extent. It's we all give a shit about how we look, right? Sure, it's an extent of, of uh, right, which is why the Sofia Vergara thing was okay to mm -hmm. me, because of course she cares how she looks. She knows she's beautiful, mm -hmm. right? Um, uh, and it's just the extent of vanity. If it defines you, if your vanity defines you, then people aren't gonna wanna hang out with you. Mm -hmm. If you're the kind of person who two or three times a day, you check how you look in the mirror and you reapply your makeup, I don't think it's gonna cost you any friends. Yeah. You know, I think it's, good, it's gonna be okay. It's all about balance. A yeah. little bit of narcissism, a little sprinkle of vanity, it's not gonna ruin your life. But you know, it, the difference is, if you, you know, as an you attractive like woman. Do you excuses for myself? But no, but I mean, do you think, I don't think you think you're better than anyone because no. you're in the upper level of pretty, mm -hmm. right? You, you well, can acknowledge, you. you can acknowledge that. <laughs> um, but, but you don't, that doesn't mean you're, a better person or a smarter right. person or anything. No, no, yeah. no. And, and I go to the vanity thing because, you know, when I started becoming more open about the fact that I got a nose job, a lot of people were like, ah, that's such a vain thing. But yeah, it is a vain thing to do. I give a shit about how I look, which is why I got a nose job. And I'm unapologetic about that because I don't think that that's something that people should be ashamed of. If it's something that makes you more comfortable and it makes you feel that you look better, there's nothing wrong with yeah, that. Yeah, but we don't even need to do a poll on that. Like, I hear that some people, and again, women can be tough on other women and mm -hmm. so forth, but I mean, 86% of people are going to be like, did that nose job make you feel better? Fuck yeah, it did. Well, then... Yep. Carry on, you exactly. know. Exactly. Uh, and, and, and as it should, when did you get the nose job? It's been a few years now, probably three years ago. So you started November of 2011. Oh, so you, but so since you you had an old nose with the Turks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't remember that. Really? Yeah. It was a, I think it was a conservative nose job. Mm -hmm. I don't think that it was crazy, but for me, it w it made all the difference in the world. I had, uh, Do I got, you, uh, boo? I got uh, uh, pec implants. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't judge if you did. I did not. I've not had any uh, work yet, but I wouldn't uh, hesitate to. A lot of people think I dye my hair. I can't. They, you I have, have one great of my, hair. My best friend's mom is convinced I dye my hair, and that like literally every time I'm like, no, I really don't dye my hair, and she's like, she's like okay, okay. <laughs> that's fine. I'm like, you know, yeah, but I don't, I don't, uh, I don't dye my hair, but I would if it meant that I looked younger, and that would help me sort of make the TV yeah. jobs last longer or whatever, I, I, I could conceivably I did hair. see that box of Touch of Grey in your trunk, but it's a, whatever, it is what it is.